أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله ثم الصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى أهلي وصحبي أجمعين O brothers and sisters on the path of truth السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Of the articles of faith obligatory upon every believing soul is to believe in the ghaib, the unseen as reported in several parts of the Qur'an and Sahih reports of the Sunnah. When Allah was describing the attributes of the ones with piety in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ أَلَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ of the attributes of those with piety, according to Allah, is who believe in the unseen, establish prayer, and spend out of what we, Allah, have provided for them. That seeing is believing is deficient. It is harmful to believe everything you see and erroneous to disbelieve everything you cannot see. Our senses are limited and weak. Just as your basic arithmetic calculator cannot comprehend complex calculus, and even your scientific calculators cannot read your art beat, you are limited in abilities. One of such things you cannot yet see but must believe in is recompense. It is the truth that Allah will audit our existence, and the point of eternal recompense commences the moment you run out of breath. Upon death, every human goes about six feet below, a residence of no doors, windows, or extra rooms hold between sand and healthy particles, no friends, no families, no electricity, no laptop, no chairs, no television. Everyone, whether a believer or not, everyone will foremost experience the crushing squeezing of the grave. Then the dead is woken and questioned by the questioning angels. It was reported that whenever Uthman ibn Affan, may Allah be pleased with him, stood beside the grave, he would weep until his bird became wet. It was said to him, You remember paradise and hell and you do not weep, but you weep for this? He said, The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The grave is the first stage of the hereafter. Whoever is delivered from heat, what comes afterwards is easier. If he is not delivered from it, then what comes after it is order. He continued that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, I have never seen any horrible sin, but the grave is more horrible. Little wonder we are enjoined to visit the graveyard to reflect upon our eventual return. Subhanallah. What makes the grave even scarier is to know that it is a place where odds are settled. It is not enough that you are a Muslim who prays. We've heard the story of an occasion where the Prophet, peace be upon him, passed by two graves and told his companions. He said to his companions that the inhabitants of the two graves were being punished, not for disbelieving in Allah, but because one used to backbite and the other would urinate carelessly and stain his garment. A Muslim must be careful in his conduct, be fair in his dealings, run from sins as much as he can and seek repentance. For Allah is oft forgiven and merciful. In worldly exams, once we have the questions beforehand, we can be confident of excelling. For the test that matters the most, you have the questions too. But are your answers ready? Who is your Lord? What was your religion? Who was your prophet? To answer these questions, start evaluating your life. Are your deeds pleasing to Allah? When they tell you that Islam enjoins a thing or forbids another, do you submit or follow your desires? Are you of the people of Sunnah or you do things your own way? In these lie your answers. We are a few minutes away from Iftar. Remember to supplicate like we usually do. On this day, I say, O oh Allah, the responsive, we seek refuge with you from disbelief and poverty. We seek your protection from the torment of the grave and its tribulations and stripes. We seek refuge in you from the evil of our actions, in actions and thoughts. Be pleased with us. Show us mercy. O oh Allah, the affirming.
والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته